皆さん、こんにちは。And welcome to the Board Game Dojo. 明けましておめでとうございます。Happy New Year from all of us to you and yours. We decided that our first video of 2023 is going to be a compilation of the most frequently asked questions to us. You can contact us on YouTube, Board Game Geek, Twitter, Instagram, and we have combined all of them into a guide today of buying Japanese games. In our guide today, we are going to be answering questions like, What board game store should I go to? Some shopping tips of when you're in Japan or buying Japanese games online, as well as what Japanese games to look for. So, as always, we'll put the timestamps below of what the basic general questions are that we're answering today. But more than I think most other videos, a lot of the order that we're going to go in today, they build off of each other. So we'll kind of be referring back to earlier things we talked about in the video later on in the video. So I do actually recommend watching it in order. But if you're really, really interested in just one part of the video, go ahead and skip around. We will include timestamps below on YouTube or in the show notes if you are listening to this as a podcast. Now, I'm not really sure how long this video is going to be, but let's just get it going right away with the by far most frequently asked question, which is, I or somebody I know is going to Japan soon. Which board game stores do you recommend we go to? So it is worth reiterating that this one is coming out January 2023, which means that, hey, maybe in two or three years, some more cool board game stores might open up. But I do want to just update the answer to this because I feel like a lot of the suggestions people ask me my opinions of are stores that are actually out of business now or no longer really do a good job of selling board games that you might be interested in. So let's start it off with the two big ones that I usually recommend to everybody, and that is Yellow Submarine and Sudo Gaia. Now, these two are completely opposites of each other in terms of the clientele they serve, the inventory that they have in their stores, and the complete atmosphere of the stores. But let's start off with Yellow Submarine. Yellow Submarine is typically the one that you'll see recommended the most amount of times, I think, and with good reason. Both of these stores are actually nationwide, but Yellow Submarine specifically specializes in board games. If you find a Yellow Submarine store, they are going to for sure have board games and tabletop RPG stuff. So you never have to really worry about the reason I specified this will be more apparent a little bit later. And you do actually have to, uh, and you do actually have to type in Yellow Submarine board game store when you're looking it up because it'll pop up with the Beatles thing and their logo is pretty close, which I'm sure is completely by accident. But Yellow Submarine specializes in new games. They are there to bring you the newest, latest, and greatest stuff to you. And so 90%, 95% of their inventory is going to be new games. And this can include some indie games and includes stuff right after a game market happens, which I'll explain to you what the game market is later on in the video. They will actually have not really exclusive contracts, but they'll have contracts with some of the sellers at the game market to specifically make them more copies of the game, even if they sell out. So there have been times when after the game market has ended, the only place you can actually get it would be the overstock that Yellow Submarine gets. But Yellow Submarine, the store is really clean. The staff is always willing to help you. Uh, they do normally don't really speak English, but they will at least try to help out, especially if you're in Akihabara and Shinjuku where they get a lot of foreigners anyway. Yellow Submarine is kind of like a friendly local game store, I think, that you might have near you. Where the inventory, sometimes you might be able to find things that you can't find elsewhere, but they might never be able to have the best prices. They might not be able to comp compete with the online game store. But there have been many times in which I cannot find a game online. I go to Yellow Submarine and they might have one copy left or two copies left of a game. In fact, that's where I found games like Cauldron 15, which is pretty much out of print until next year. I just found it sitting on the shelf at Yellow Submarine because they just had an overstock amount of copies. So that's Yellow Submarine. And that's usually the main one I recommend to people. The other one I want to recommend to you is Sudugaya. And Sudugaya is the complete opposite of Yellow Submarine. 90 to 95% of their inventory is going to be used games. And that's because Sudugaya by itself is not actually a board game store. It is a secondary market store. It is a store dedicated to buying 
things from people and then reselling them to you in the store. So when you go to a Sudagai, you're not just going to find board games there. You're going to find video games. You're going to find J-pop and K-pop CDs. You're going to find anime goods. You're going to find action figures and Gundam. You're going to find Yu-Gi-Oh cards and Pokemon cards. That is the way that they really are. And so because of it, the staff isn't really going to be able to help you out because they don't really specialize in board games as a whole, unless you go to the Akihabara one. And that one is very, very confusing in a bit because they actually have five or six different storefronts in Akihabara, which each one specializing in something different. So I'll actually put the Google Maps location of the specific board game store there below because the Akihabara locations of both Yellow Submarine and Sudogaya are by far their best locations. But Sudogaya is really, really good for finding sometimes out of print games. I was able to find Throne and Grail there, Pecunia there, and a couple of really hard to find Japanese games for decent prices, just because the resale market really isn't there very much. So the guy also has a much better online store than Yellow Submarine, so you'll be able to actually better be able to find what inventory they do have and what games they are able to sell, and they are able to ship it to you. And this is going to be really important when we go to shopping tips later on in the video. So those are the two main stores. And I think the main reason that they're so recommended is because they usually have the best inventory levels, but they're also nationwide. Oftentimes they also are both pretty close to each other as well, and this is pretty intentional. I know that Yellow Submarine really dominated Shinjuku, and so Sudogaya opened up a shop there. Then Yellow Submarine opened up something in Tachikawa, which is more western part of Tokyo, so then Sudogaya opened up a store last year. So they're constantly competing against each other. If you do go to Yellow Submarine, note that they do have a point card that if you spend enough money, you'll be able to get a discount in the future in case you... um want to go to different locations, all the point cards will do any location. So if you're planning on maybe spending a bunch of money in the Akihabara one and then later going on to Shinjuku, you might be able to uh, use the points at the Shinjuku location later. Now, there are a couple stores that I do want to warn you to avoid for one reason or another. The first one is one that is commonly cited on Reddit threads from 2012 as the best one to go to, and that is Roll and Roll Station. Now, the reason that I tell you to avoid this one is pretty simple. They are actually closed now. They are out of business now. They went down uh, due to COVID, which is really sad because they were a really good store. But unfortunately, they just weren't able to keep up with all of the different board game businesses that were going on. So avoid that one. That was also in Akihabara. Um, but the other one I do that is still open that I don't like personally at all is Shosen Grande. Shosen Grande is actually a board game store in the university area of Jimbocho. And uh, I think this one is more so because it is frequently cited in um, forums that are more aimed towards foreigners living in Japan, but I've heard this one frequently cited as a great board game store, and I have just never found them to be very good. A, Jimbocho is way more inconvenient than a lot of the other places, unless you just happen to be staying along the subway line that passes through there. But the other thing is that their prices are just ridiculous. Choshin Grande actually specializes in importing games and importing English copies of games, English Kickstarters, things like that. And I will always remember a time when Smartphone Inc. came out, and you could still get it on Amazon or Rakuten and import it. And it was still only like $60, $80 or something like that with like $10, $15 of import fees. And they were selling it for something like $150, $175. And when I asked them about it, why, why is this so expensive? They just said, well, it's import fees. And like, okay, yeah, import fees are a thing, but it that is a huge markup, and I just never really returned from there. Well, okay, that's a lie. I've returned once or twice. But mostly, Shosen Grande is good for if you are looking for an imported game. And every once in a while, I think it's... Hmm. I would really only use Shosen Grande if it is your last resort. You have to have a game. You really, really, really want a game, and it maybe just happen to have it would be the only reason I would ever go there. But there's one other place I would check just in case, and that is Yodobashi Camera. Yodobashi Camera is actually an electronics store. You'll probably, when you're visiting Japan, see it either that or Bic Camera. They're pretty similar to each other. They are these large, huge electronics stores that have 10, 11 floors in them. 
but Yonabashi Camera actually usually has a really good board game selection. Now, usually they're only going to have the really big ones. They're going to have all the versions of Catan. They're going to have a Ticket to Ride. They're going to have the really big sellers there. But the thing about Yonabashi Camera is, is that if they have it, it is probably going to be a pretty good price compared to Yellow Submarine. And the Yellow Submarine location in Akihabara, from Yellow Submarine to Yodabashi Camera is only like a five minute walk. So it's worth actually, if you know that there is a game that is pretty popular and they should be having it everywhere, think like you can look on Amazon Japan and if Amazon Japan has it, Yodabashi Camera probably has it and they probably have it cheaper than Yellow Submarine does. So it's kind of up to you whether or not you want to take the risk. But for me, that's kind of how I look at it. To sum up this section of frequently asked questions, really I would be looking at mainly Yellow Submarine and Sudogaya, depending on if you want a new game or a used copy, because used copies are just sometimes cheaper as well. Then I would go to Yodabashi and only and only as a final resort, a last resort, would I look at Shosen Grande. So next let's talk about some shopping tips. The first thing I would do is I would contact your hotel and see if they are able to hold packages for you. The reason being is earlier I talked about that Sudogaya has a great online store. They have a great online store and generally speaking they are pretty good about shipping your games out in a timely fashion but not always especially if they have to uh, get something from the other side of the country and then put it in the same box as everything else it can take them a little bit of time. So what I recommend you do is you look online at Sudogaya at their online store, and I will post that below. I would look at it and then I would actually order it if your hotel allows you to hold packages there and put it as and put your hotel as the address to ship it to because Sudogaya and having it be shipped to you. So I, I think it's like 2,000 yen or 3,000 yen, it's something like, and that's around 18 to 28 bucks. If you order that, it's actually free shipping. So it is actually, I think, in your best effort to kind of save the time of going in between the different stations and going in between the different Sudogayas, the different Yellow Submarines, the different board game stops that you want to go to, and just ordering it online in advance. A lot of hotels will do this for you because actually, shipping goods and shipping gifts back and forth across the country is actually a pretty common practice in Japan. So they should be able to do it for you. But again, just ask ahead of time. Yeah, I think that's a really, I think it's just a way for you to save time and also a little bit of money because you're probably also going to be able to compare. They actually have a comparison thing on their site. Sudogai has a comparison thing on their site that says like this store has it at this price, this store has it at this price, this store has it at this price. So you can kind of see where you can save money and where you can save time and when you can save time, I should say. Another shopping tip to do is when you're going to Japan, make sure that you know what time of year you are going at. Okay. That one's kind of obvious, but I say it because there, the summer months in Japan, it rains every single day. Japan has a harsh rainy season that is very wet and it's very humid and it means it is very bad for your board games. So my tip for you is to invest in some kind of waterproof backpack or waterproof suitcase if you don't already have one, something that is going to keep your board game safe. If you're going to go fly all the way to Japan, spend that money and then buy a bunch of games that you can't buy over here, I would spend the $50, $100 to do some <laughs> to have some kind of protection for it because board games and Japanese summers do not get along at all. Trust me, I know this from experience. Another tip is to see how flexible your travel dates are and plan around when the game markets are. Two of them are in Tokyo and one of them are in Osaka every year. And these are great ways to get really small print games. Sometimes these games will be at the game market and then they won't be in print again until the next game market a couple of months later. Some of my favorite games are games that I have found at the game market and some really, really hard to find games. Like uh, I know a lot of you are looking at games um, like Ambient Abyssal are really only available during the game market because these publishers are so small and don't really have that much money that they can't afford to print all of these copies year round. And so they save up for them 
to sell during the game market. So if you can all go with it and just be able to experience the atmosphere of what it is, see the booth, see just how big some of these publishers are in proportion to other ones, I would give it a shot. It's a really fun day. Now know that the game market is really for buying games. There is the, when I have gone, there are no play areas to play the games at, and it is really short day. Like they generally open the doors at 10 or 11 AM and then close it down at four. So it's like six hours of shopping. Like you just got to get it done. Now, Game market tips, because there are a couple things to know about the game market. Tip number one, buy the early advance ticket. I know it doubles the cost of the ticket itself, and it's only an extra hour you get of shopping, but that extra hour is huge. Most of the small print games that are going to be really popular will actually sell out in that first hour. They will hold some copies for those I would say like I've experienced that they usually hold, I would say about 50% of the copies for people who get in during the normal admission time. But then you have a super long line of people to wait through. So you might not actually even get in until noon, one o'clock. And now you're down to three hours of shopping or four hours of shopping. And you have a chance that those games are sold out. Now, the early admission ticket only goes during the Saturday, during the first day of the Tokyo ones. And then the Sunday is just everybody is regular admission. But I do recommend that if you can, get that early admission ticket, do it. It is absolutely worth it. The second thing to know is that a lot of game publishers will do reservations on the game market page. Not all of them, but a lot of them will. If a game does reservation tickets, do it. Because that means that they are expecting to sell out during the game market. You get priority. Now know that most of these reservations will only last until about one o'clock, two o'clock. If you don't pick up the game by then, they will then sell your copy that you have reserved set aside. You don't actually have to pay for it until then anyway. So that is actually a way of just, even if you have a chance that you might want the game, reserve it and then you don't have to pick it up and they'll just sell it later. And that leads me to the third and final thing, bring plenty of cash. Most of these publishers do not accept credit cards, and I have definitely run into the problem of running out of cash, and there is no ATM in the building. So make sure that you are bringing a surplus amount of cash or whatever you feel comfortable bringing because most of the time, that is the only way you are going to be able to pay. A lot of publishers will also do bundle deals that are really, really, really good, and you they won't tell you that they're doing them online, so you'll kind of eventually end up spending more money than you were planning on. But you know, if the game that you were thinking of buying is maybe 20 bucks, but you can get two more games for only five more dollars, which is sometimes the bundles that they give you, you're just like, okay, yeah, I guess I'll do that. So if so bring plenty of cash. So those are my three game market tips for sure, which is bring plenty of cash, make sure you do res reservations. And if you can do early admission tickets, the next thing to know is that you don't need to know Japanese in order to visit Japan. I love that about it. If you stick to the cities like Tokyo, Osaka, Hiroshima, Hokkaido, uh, Hokkaido is not a city, but Sapporo. If you stick to those, generally some people will speak English, but there are some Japanese things to know that will help you in either not getting lost or just knowing the condition of what you're buying. And this relates to both online and in stores. So the first thing to tell you about is the difference between kaitori and kaike. So when you go to Surugaya or you go to a shop like it, where they are just as interested in buying goods from you as you probably are buying goods from them. Actually, the busiest counter is going to be Kaitori, which is where they purchase the stuff from you. It's where you go and you bring your stuff and they will give you an amount that they'll buy it from you for. I, Surugaya, for as much as I like about that store, has yet to change their English from this because they call that counter the purchase counter, which when people generally go there the first time, I know for sure me, maybe it's just me, but I thought that was the purchase counter of where I could buy stuff from. But no, you will wait in that line and then they will send you somewhere else to Kaike. Now, usually this says cashier or it'll sometimes be sales, but usually it'll be, it'll say cashier and it'll have the yen symbol there. That is where you need to go in order to purchase your stuff. So don't be like me where I waited in like a half an hour line and then 
and ended up that I was sent to the other side of the store. They couldn't even help me on that side of the store. They sent me to the other side where there was no line at all. Know that cashier is where you're going to buy the stuff. And sometimes the purchase counter is not where you do the purchasing. It's where the store does the purchasing. The other really, really important one to know if you're online, especially is the difference between Chuko and Shinpin. Now, I will put the Japanese characters in the description below, whichever one you're listening to, podcast or YouTube. But chuko means used. Shinpin means new. Just understanding that, like when you're on Sudagaya's site, is really, really important because you specifically, I think a lot of um, a lot of buying services, which I'll talk about in the next tip, um, well, it'll help you if you specify that like chuko is okay. Like used is okay. Um, I know for for certain that Sudagaya on their website will ask you between which one you want, the new one or the used one, and they'll give you two different prices on it. You can probably figure it out yourself, but just knowing that, and it'll have stickers on the in-store, it'll tell you specifically which one it is, if it's used or new. Usually Sudagaya is really good about separating them out. Like it'll be like a half an aisle of new and then the rest will be used. But every once in a while at Yellow Submarine, I will find some used games mixed in with the news section, especially if they're running some kind of sale. So just kind of be careful on that one. So that brings us to the next tip, which is buying services. Buying services do exist. Um, there, I've heard of Zen Market is popular, Buy E is popular, things like that. And they will do things like buy things from Sudagaya for you and forward it to you. They'll buy things like Med from Medicati with and forward them to you. I would just tell you, I think that this is a really cool service that they will do, but just know that they can be pretty slow. So. If you're going to use that service, which I think is really cool, be ready to get an email back saying that they couldn't get it before it was sold. And that leads me to the final tip that'll go into the final question, which is really just come with a list prepared of what games you are really looking for and try to include pictures whenever possible. Yellowstone Marine, Sudagaya, these are great stores, but they are overwhelming, especially if you don't speak the language with how much they have there especially Yellow Submarine, where sometimes they will just have cubbies of hundreds of little card games and you're looking there like, where do I even begin? I can't read any of this. It can be a bit overwhelming. So if you come in with some pictures of what the game boxes look like, it can help you, but it can also help you just ask the clerk, hey, do you have this? So that you're not wasting your time looking through for an hour for something like Pompiers, which sometimes they have and a lot of times they don't. You just ask, hey, do you have this? No. Okay, great. You just saved an hour of your time. I'm not saying that looking through them isn't fun. It really is. And sometimes I will spend an afternoon just combing through whatever they have. But if you're traveling to Japan and you have a limited amount of time going in with pictures and a list of games you're having, I know it might sound obvious, but once you walk into that store and you are just constantly hearing the the cheesy music that they have in the store, it can just, and all the colors that are everywhere, just having that list in front of you can be a calming experience and prevent you from being too overwhelmed to really enjoy what you're doing. So let's end it by talking about what games I recommend you look for. And of course, the number one thing to look for is just the list that you just made of games that you're looking for. But specifically, let's talk about some things that I find I recommend people a lot get a lot when they are in Japan. The first thing is anything by Sashi and Sashi that you're interested in. Sashi and Sashi is a really popular publisher that I know you can get on the BGG store, but you can get it in Japan quite cheaply as well. Especially games like Let's Make a Bus Route, the original. If you're in Kyoto, I think you can still get some of the Let's Make a Bus Route Kyoto version there but some of the newer stuff you can really still only get from Japan or, or at least you can get it for a pretty cheap price. I would make sure that you look on the BGG store to see if it's worth it for you to get it because it does take room in your suitcase, but I usually recommend getting those there. If you're interested in the newer Oink games, you can also get those there, but for the most part, I really don't recommend it. They're not really that much cheaper to get and especially now that Amazon has a pretty reliable inventory of them, I, I find that Unless there's a, unless you are at Sudugaya and they have a long out of print Oink game, 
there that you really want. I usually don't recommend getting Oink games while in Japan. If you've watched the channel at all, you'll also know that we really enjoy our trick takers, our card games, our climbing games, things like that. And that is ultimately what Japan is most known for. As a more general rule, remembering that Japanese homes are basically pretty small. And so the best sellers are usually card games and small board games, or at least like board games that don't take up that much room are what you're going to find a lot of in the stores. So just be aware of that. You're probably not going to find Cthulhu Wars there. In fact, I saw like a copy of Cthulhu Wars just continually be clearanced off for cheaper and cheaper and cheaper because just nobody has the room for it. But that also means that every once in a while, you might actually find a copy of a game that you like just in a smaller box. I know for sure um, that the Japanese copy of Azul is actually, I think, smaller than the original copy of Azul just because... Um, just because whenever they can get the box size smaller, they will. So I think that that's really cool. But ultimately, I don't know if that's really that interesting for you to get. Eat Den is another really popular publisher that are starting to make more waves in the US with the Funbrick series Kickstarter that they had. They also had the Crash Octopus Kickstarter that went really well, and we recommend that game all of the time. But generally speaking, they are the easiest to get while you are in Japan. So I would take a look at them if they are in if if they interest you at all. But ultimately, I think some of the most fun you can have while board game shopping in Japan is just finding one with a weird theme for it and taking it home and doing some Google Translate. Uh, there is an excellent, excellent community of people out there that are willing to help you translate it or maybe already have had it translated. And if you can find some new weird game to translate, there are a lot of people out there to help you or you can at least join in on the community. We have talked a little bit about just how strange of concepts that Japanese game designers bring into card games. On Board Game Breakfast on the Dice Tower, we've talked about games that have themes like drinking as much as you can without passing out, or aging meat without it spoiling, or being on a cooking show and having to describe what you're doing to the judges. Things like that. Japanese games and game designers bring about these excellent, excellent themes to do that ultimately... <sighs> I feel bad in that I don't know what to recommend to you because I want you to pick a theme that is just wacky, that is just wild, that is just super interesting to you. Because I think that that's ultimately the most fun. One other game I do recommend just picking up just because it's just so Japanese is Stone Garden. I actually think it's a pretty good game. It's going to add a little bit of heft. It is a big box. It is a heavy box. But it's all about building a Zen garden, and I just think it looks gorgeous. It's easy to it's easy to pick up for new players, and there's um, English versions of the rules online, so that you don't even have to worry about translating it. I'll put that below too. It is hard, it's out of print, but again, if you followed my tips from earlier and you order online instead of guy, they almost always have it in stock at one of their stores somewhere that you can order it in advance. In conclusion, today we've talked about things like the game market where to go shopping, some tips for when you're in the store, and some Japanese words so that hopefully you can learn, and what games to look for, although I don't think I was very helpful on that one, but that's more dependent on you. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe it, and if you enjoyed listening to it on podcast, also, you know, subscribe to it, download it, whatever it is, leave a comment, leave a five-star review, we love it. And thank you all for who participated in last month's giveaways. We gave away, I think, a total of like six different games last month to people. So that was really exciting. And we hope to do something again like that this year. And thank you to the other content creators. Well, I don't know if I would really count as a content creator. I guess it's just not great content. But thank you to those who reached out to me and kind of gave me the advice that, yes, in fact, Google Forms is definitely the way to do giveaways in the future, that that's how they do it. So thank you to those who messaged me about that. I will definitely use that in the future to make the giveaways a little bit better. Thank you so much for watching and hope you have a wonderful new year. Our new year's resolution for this year is to be more consistent in our videos and podcasts. We kind of went where we had like eight straight weeks of content and then we'd like fall off for a couple months and cause we would get busy and then we'd have like four straight again and then fall away again. So I think Figuring out a more consistent schedule is our New Year's resolutions this year. What are your New Year's resolutions for gaming this year? Leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Let's have a great year this year. Bye-bye.